Hi, this is Josh Marshall from TPM Media. It's Thursday, June 21st, 2007. Just after the September 11th attacks on the World Trade Center in 2001, the EPA put out a series of press releases reassuring people in Lower Manhattan that the air quality was safe and people could go back to living and working in the area. Well, it turned out that wasn't true, or at least the EPA had no test to back that up, and we know that subsequently many people have gotten sick. Well, in 2003, the EPA Inspector General issued a report that said that the White House, specifically a group called the Council of Environmental Quality, headed by James Connaughton, forced the EPA to remove warnings from those press releases and replace them with reassuring statements telling everybody that everything was safe. Well, this week and next week, the House and Senate are holding hearings looking into exactly why that happened. Yesterday, James Connaughton, the guy who made the EPA change those press releases, went before the Senate and tried to explain, justify, bamboozle about what he had done. And we want to show you some clips of that testimony. Take a look. So let me ask, did you convince EPA to add reassuring statements and delete cautionary ones? Uh, I think those characterizations by the Inspector General were uh, incompletely formed uh, and inaccurate. There's a difference between the meaning and the impact of those. I mean, EPA originally said, however, even at low levels, EPA considers asbestos hazardous. So why did CEQ um, overrule EPA, an agency with considerably more staff and expertise about environmental hazards, and modify that press release? Well, actually, the, the inverse was the case, Madam Chairwoman. We had uh, daily and sometimes more than daily conference calls with the people from Region 2, as well as the people here in Washington, including CEQ, that were going over all of the communications and all of the data. Uh, what Mr. Thurnstrom was doing was coordinating the output of those discussions. So there were many, the, the, the people drafting the press releases were not necessarily the professionals who were providing advice on how to construe the data. And so the product, the final product of that one particular press release was the product of a much broader discussion among the public health professionals in the field and back here in Washington on how to make this one particular statement. The other thing that's important, Madam Chairwoman, this was one press release out of what were thousands and thousands of communications. We had, we had a, a particular focus on the workers who faced, who faced extreme danger in the conditions uh, in doing the recovery and rescue work. Uh, we had a second focus on the people who were acutely exposed to the volume of dust immediately after the collapse, and that really was in the hands of the public health professionals. And EPA was instrumental in encouraging people to go seek medical help and, and, and monitoring. And then there was the third category about the residents, the people who were distant distant from the, uh, the, the immediate ground zero, but who are worried about the smell and the odor and all the, you know, all the things that you all know about, the visceral um, sense of, of, from the fires in the days that followed September 11th. And so what this one press release was, was the first statement regarding the ambient concerns, and it was specifically focused on the questions that came up with respect to asbestos. Well, Mr. The Chairman. data that we had in hand five days after monitoring started actually provided much greater reassurance. I have to tell you, all of us were relieved. We feared that there would be quite substantial amounts of asbestos that people might be directly exposed to. As it happens, the data was showing that that was not the case. And I think it is the statement in the final press release was the accurate one. EPA officials told the Inspector General that your staff deleted recommendations from that New York City residents obtain professional cleaning services for indoor areas. Why was the the, the um, White House recommend uh, removing those uh, the, those uh, uh, alerts from from the uh, statements? Um, actually, Senator, I, I'm not in a position to to recall very specific decisions about very specific pieces of text, um, some of which. I was not directly involved in. There was an interface between uh, Mr. Thurnstrom of my office, who actually is a New Yorker as well, uh, and the EPA on compiling the results of these broader, uh, these broader interfaces among the public health professionals that I talked about. And so the effort between them was to see, to do the best job they could, using their best professional judgment, to capture 
the information we're receiving and then communicate that in the most accurate and timely way they could, and then to update that information as it was obtained. Uh, and so any particular issue, items were added to the press releases, items were deleted to the press releases, items were changed in the press releases. Um, EPA made changes, my office made changes, OSHA suggested changes. Uh, this was the typical process of interagency coordination well, on a communications document. Yeah, well, why uh, did uh, you feel it necessary in C CEQ to uh, uh, review press statements and change things that were in there that might have been uh, more uh, more concerned, but uh, more more candid. Um, we don't. Well, you did then, according to uh, the reports that we see, that there were modifications of words and uh, and statements uh, that uh, you you were the final uh, decision making uh, maker in terms of what was uh, allowable, what could go to the press. There were lots of things that stress the fact that no releases were to go out without the approval of the administration, then that would have been you. I disagree with your conclusion, Senator. Next week, Congressman Jerry Nadler is going to be holding a hearing in the House, and he'll have former EPA administrator and former New Jersey Governor Christy Whitman up there testifying. He'll be asking her about her role in this incident. I'm Josh Marshall from TPM Media. And we'll talk to you next week.